Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything with Mariano and Pauline. Hashtag Pauliano. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple. It's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. To get us, to get us. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media News Podcast. I'm Pauline. And I'm Mariano. And today is going to be kind of like a fun-ish kind of <laughs> show. Um, so the Yeezys are, Connie's coming out with a new pair. Is it a new pair or is it like a combo? Um, well, they're, I thought I heard they were like a, um, I don't know if the first Yeezys were just kind of Kanye's shoes, but these are Nike. Oh, and- so because before he was with Adidas, now he's with Nike. Right. The Nike Yeezys are beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I saw them on walmart.com and I just thought it was funny. I didn't like, you never think of Walmart as selling like high end stuff. Right. You know, so I was like, oh, they're available at Walmart. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. They are $1,500. Ooh. Some people, I mean, I love shoes. I really do. And I like sneakers, but I don't know. I have a but hard time. Such a- we should huh? just buy them. No. Like, I have a hard time even spending, like, 250 on some sneakers. I feel like that's a lot. Yeah, but these are beautiful. Like, I mean, I wouldn't spend, you know, almost $7,000 either unless I was extra balling. But, yeah. But if I did buy these, I would, I feel like I would never wear them on, you know, outside. Very true. Ever. I wouldn't want to dirty them. Yeah, I would have to be stepping on, like, rose petals everywhere I went. I do know that there were a pair of Wheezies that this guy, um, I don't know him personally, but he went to my college and um, he was actually selling his Yeezys for a lot of money too to pay his rent. And I felt really bad because I just felt like one poor guy that he has to sell something that I'm sure he loved very much to pay his rent. So I felt kind of bad, but then I was like, hey, I mean... They are pretty valuable, and people were going to buy them. You know, I don't know. This is where me and you are different, because if you have problems paying rent and you bought Yeezys, I don't feel bad for you. No, like, I don't think that... Well, I mean, like I said, I don't know him, so I don't know how he obtained these sneakers or whatever, but I just felt pretty bad, because I was like, oh, poor guy. Have to get rid of something. Yeah. But I mean, at least he wasn't saying I can't pay my rent because I'm trying to buy these shoes. He was actually selling them. But so, um, okay, so that's Kanye. But I mean, Kanye, I think a lot of people, uh, not only with just like Kanye West shoes, but like with just shoes in general, that um, a lot of like, I call them like hype beasts. I don't know if you've heard that expression before, but like they just have to have it because they need to have it, you know, not necessarily. Like you said, not a lot, I don't know if a lot of these guys or and girls, I don't know if a lot of these people actually like really wear them, you know? It's kind of yeah, more I know, just exactly. like having them, or like you wear them in the ugly. house. Hmm? Some shoes are ugly, but these are, I think are really cool, and I love how they're called Red October. Mm-hmm. I love the sound. Right. So that's about Kanye, and I think well, you were also saying I am. Um, it's kind of cool. Speaking of like just like that Kardashian Jenner West clan um, over there, that family. Um, so the Black Eyed Peas are making a remake of their 2003 hit, Where is the Love? And I love that song. I do. I really do. But the other day and, and everyone, it's funny when you put that song on in the car and everyone goes, what? And I I'm know. Like, it's a lot of fun. It really is. And um, but the cool thing about what the Black Eyed Peas are doing with this remake is that they are including a lot of our favorite artists right now. And so um, Justin Timberlake, Usher, Mary J, Diddy, 
Jaden Smith, even ASAP Rocky and Kendall Jenner. So it's kind of interesting because I don't know. I've never heard Kendall sing, which is, you know, kind of cool. So it's a little bit different, but oh, I didn't sing at all. That's why when I read that, I, I was confused. Like why Kendall Jenner? Yeah. And so, hey, I mean, maybe she has a hidden talent. I know that supposedly Kylie can rap and um, Kim Kardashian did come out with like a music video once. So maybe maybe there's some, you know, maybe there's some vocals in that family that we haven't been blessed with yet. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it's just going to be kind of like, um, you know, like the song. Are... Pardon? Like we are the world. I was. Ex that's exactly what I was going to say. It's giving me that kind of a vibe. So I'm wondering how it's going to turn out. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Every, I mean, that's a pretty good song. I think I love it just as much as a lot of other people do. And if you haven't heard it, then, you know, it, and it's kind of interesting because this song came out in 2013, but they're doing a remake now. 13 years later and it's still pretty relevant the things that they're singing about in the song yep well the reason why they decided to remake it because they've been on like a four or five year hiatus the black eyed Peas, but right with everything that's been going on with like the police and and like the the candidates and you know that's why they they got together and decided to redo it yeah because i'm wondering the in the first place was kind of uh, in response to 9 11 i remember they were talking yeah. about 2001 you know it happened in september of 2001 and, um, you know, they they were all talking together in, like, interviews that I had seen. And they were like, you know what? What's the big question right now is where's the love? So they decided to make that song. And right. now things are kind of falling the same way. So they decided to redo it. And I'm wondering, I don't know if you know, so I'm not sure. Are they coming out with a new album or just a single? I think it's just the single. Ah, oh, I mean, that's great. I was hoping they'd come back for a new album. I love the Black Eyed Peas. Me too, but I just need to go back and buy the rest of their stuff. Yeah, it's not you should. You definitely should. It's I do like a lot of their um, music, and I think they're a lot of fun. And I was I would personally was very disappointed when they kind of like did their separate things, you know. Which is sometimes almost inevitable when you're in a group that eventually somebody's going to break off, or a few of them will break off, you know. Um, yeah. But who knows? Maybe if this single is very successful maybe they'll grace us with a new album and like a reunion tour that'd be a lot of fun well even if they don't i'm sure maybe they'll they'll start like a tour yeah that's what i'm saying and i, I my first concert was actually to a black eyed peas concert and it was so much fun so so much fun so um and actually speaking of music and speaking of uh just you know songs and music in general um alicia keys has been getting some really weird and negative reactions on like twitter and social media because she didn't wear makeup to the vmas yeah well it's funny because well first of all i love alicia keys because she's beautiful anyway um but i thought it was funny that most of the negative reactions were from girls that i saw well and it's kind of not like brand new news that she's trying to like not wear makeup as much um because she started like this whole like movement of being you know just being barefaced and just like loving yourself for how you are and how you look and accepting yourself um which i mean it's very you know that's it's a good message it really is but then um so i was so she finally did step out you know not wearing makeup to an actual event um and twitter has been like freaking out which honestly it's really not that big of a deal to warrant people and all this backlash like she's receiving and a lot of um kind of some of the response to some of the negative backlash is that there's been um you know, I think it was on BuzzFeed where they had an article about all the other celebrities that don't wear makeup to these events. And they were um, kind of just like poking fun at it. You know, like Nick Jonas, oh, yeah. Jaden Smith, like all these other people don't wear makeup. And why are we not getting on the guys? But then when a girl does it, we're like, whoa, what is she doing? I saw that too. And I was confused because they were like, yeah, like 13 celebrities who don't wear makeup. And I was like, Oh, Nick Jonas doesn't wear makeup. I'm not surprised. You know, and I was like, why are they showing these people? Uh huh. Um, 
But I, you know, I kind of thought it was a joke, but I just didn't, I wasn't sure. Yeah, because it's like the one time a girl, and then it's funny to me, one thing that I think is always funny is when, like, um, on social media or on TV or in magazines, they praise it or, like, they have, like, full-on, um, like, makeup tutorials or whatever about having, using makeup to get a no makeup look face, you know, like a no like to try to achieve the look of not wearing makeup with makeup, <laughs> which is kind of so. And it's like we try to achieve that with wearing makeup to look like, we, oh, we don't care. Or, you know, people will say, oh, so and so is looking bare faced today. But we know that she's still wearing a lot of makeup. And the one time a woman does step out truly bare faced, everybody freaks out. And I mean, it's up to her what she wants to do. And like you said, she still looks very pretty regardless, with or without. Um, and so people are just, I think, making this a big deal for no reason, honestly. I just, I don't understand why people care so much. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't harm you at all. That yeah. Alicia Keys, you know, like, it, and she's doing her own thing. Like, unless you're at the VMAs, I don't see how it even makes a difference. People it really are just doesn't. overly nosy. Yeah. And if anything, you know. Good for her because guaranteed she definitely took a lot less time getting ready. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> a lot more time for other things. <laughs> like all high school, I, I would get up like like two and a half minutes before I had to be Exactly. Exactly. So um, we're going to actually cut it to a quick break. Um, and then when we come back, we wanted to discuss um, the what's happening on with the victims of that were like a part of the Colorado shooting, um, the movie theater shooting. So, um, and some other things that we wanted to share as well. So keep it locked here. You're listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media News Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And welcome back. I'm Pauline. I'm Mariana. And so right before the break, we were kind of like mentioning that. Um, so everybody kind of remembers the Colorado shooting um, in the movie theater, which was actually very, very sad. And one thing is that sometimes these stories, when we hear of different tragedies, we kind of not forget them necessarily, but there's new news and new information. But then so a lot of times things get lost and we don't like revisit it and we never know like what truly happens to those people that survived what truly happens to um like some cases we do follow along to see what happens during like the trial and things like that but um it's actually really kind of like sad news that has come out but according to the la times the survivors of the 2012 Colorado movie theater attack will actually have to pay Cinemark um, $700,000 in legal fees. And like, uh -huh. when I, I, I found that title and I put it up as exactly as it was, but what it turned out to be was they originally sued the Cinemark theater for like having lack security. Okay. But the, the theater was actually found, like, not at fault. You know, like, think of any theater you go to. There's not really, like, security. So they didn't do anything um, that they, like, it's not like they did anything or didn't do something that they should have done that would have prevented this, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, if a psycho goes to shoot up a movie theater, that's not the theater's fault. You know what I mean? And, like, legally, they were found not at fault. 
So it's not that they're suing the survivors. They're just not going to pay the survivors legal fees. It has nothing to do with like a lawsuit. It's just if we're not at fault, we're not going to pay for your right. legal, you know, because they the they have legal fees because they tried to sue the cinema. And that's what racked up all of this. But then the cinema was found to be, you know, not at fault. So they were like, no, you know what? Actually, you can pay your own legal fees. Mm-hmm. And there was this big poll that I saw. And the majority of people actually think that that's fine. I think it's fine, too. Like, it sucks. I think it's one of those things where there's there is like no like no matter what, it, it's a it's a bad situation, you know. But but ultimately, it's the shooter's fault. You like, you know, he that's he shouldn't have done what he did. And of course, everyone suffered as a result. But with that being said, I don't think that the cinema is like bad or I don't think the owners are mean people for making them pay their own fees. I don't know what you think. But the majority of people feel the same way. Right. So, I mean, it's just something that. It sucks. Like the whole yeah, thing sucks. You it's know? Just like, I yeah, it. I was going to say, yeah, it's just like a kind of a yucky situation just in general. Yeah, it is, you know, but as a cinema owner, even though it's a, a sucky situation, like that doesn't mean that you should pay almost a million dollars, you know? Right. So, but I mean, we'll see. I don't know if what else is going to happen with this situation, if, you know, how it's going to continue to transpire. It might be done now. I mean, you know, everything's done. The, the guy is either, I, I forget, I think he's dead, the, the shooter. Um, I don't quite remember what happened to I think he's dead. If not, he's in jail for sure. Like, he didn't get away. I know that. Um, you know, like, they've had a little time to, to kind of, like, no, I don't think there's anything else that could happen, you know? Like, the, I think this is the last thing that that was kind of left up in the air, like, who should pay for everything. Mm-hmm. So, and I think it's kind of sticky, too, because, uh, like, legal fees are already, always very difficult to deal with when... Yeah. Um, you know, these situations, it's always very hard on all the people involved, especially when it's something based upon like a tragedy, you know, it's just difficult. Um, so, but in kind of a little bit different news, there was, um, so I don't know how to, (laughs) I'm thinking of like a good way to segue this, but I don't think that there really is a good way to segue into anything else after this. But, um, Speaking of being just, I don't know. I really don't know how to segue it. Take it away. I'm trying to talk about Pokemon. Are you talking about Kaylee Kowoko? No. Well, we could speak about her. I was going to start talking about Pokemon, but we could speak about her. Okay. Uh, Kaylee Kowoko is, she's an actress that was on Supernatural and she was on some other stuff. And she, right. she posted to Snapchat a picture of her exposing her breast, but like not really. You know how you can do those little things on Snapchat like the... The filters are, you know, right. And there was like a like a heart over like the nipple area, so I guess you don't really see anything. Oh, wow! Yeah. So people were just—I don't know why people were all like amazed by it. Um, I haven't—I don't really know. Like other than Supernatural, which I don't watch, she was in another show that I also don't watch. So I kind of read this and was like, oh, okay. But well, it, you know, it was it was trending on Twitter, so I thought I'd bring it up. I forget if it's her or her sister is in Big Bang Theory. I do not know. Yeah, one of them, because she's a twin. They're oh. twins. Yeah, they're twins. So I think she's the one that's in Big Bang Theory. Um, which, I mean, I don't know. People will be doing some random things on Snapchat. Snapchat, I actually, I love well, Snapchat, I, but I mean, huh? I thought it was funny because she pulled the Draymond. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of funny when celebrities do, like, when they post it to, like, their stories because they know so many people follow them so even if it's like a two second clip because like you know how you can time the picture or like whatever even if it's two seconds like i feel like people are so quick to get a screenshot that and because it's being like literally blasted to like depending on your celebrity status thousands of people it's not gonna go a unnoticed or b unscreenshotted (laughs) So it's always funny to me when celebrities do this kind of stuff because I don't know if they're like doing it because like there's certain celebrities like we know they're doing it on purpose and then that's you know what they do but then there's did it on purpose like I don't know about Draymond's that one might have been like it meant to be to someone in particular yeah I think Draymond was an accident yeah but um 
hers, I mean, it seemed like the kind of picture that's not like an accident, you know? Right. But did she mean to post it to the, the story? I don't know. I mean, she like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And I think that is kind of like funny because I don't know. It's, it is funny. I guess with all things, you can always make mistakes, you know, like you can accidentally send it or whatever. So, I mean, not quite sure. I didn't get, I didn't see that. Snapchat, I do like that they're um, always updating like filters. I recently was doing like the little butterfly crown filter, which I think is really cute. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Snapchat is really crazy to me. So I, I stopped using it because there's so many filters and I'm tired of seeing everybody look like a dog. and like the Aw. Well, honestly, okay, I have a confession. I don't really look at other people's stories that much. I mostly just post my own stories and open up, like, things that are sent to me. And so, like, my really good friends, they know that about me. And so, like, they know even if they post it on a story – to still send it to me if they really want me to see it. Like if it's something that they think I specifically will think was funny, like mm -hmm. I'm not going to see it on their story. You know what I mean? So that's, I, I love Snapchat, but then it's mostly just me just posting stuff of myself, <laughs> not really looking at other people's stuff because I'm just like, uh, you know, I'm doing my thing too. And I don't follow any celebrities. I follow, I follow Michelle Obama ever since she, got her snapchat but that's about it i think that's the only celebrity i really follow oh yeah, I and I, I follow any celebrities i really follow... i don't think i follow anyone that i don't know period yeah Actually, no, i i do follow a radio show but that's it oh okay yeah, yeah yeah i follow um do you know zero from holes like he's uh, an actual person cleo cool. i follow him on snapchat but that's kind of like um i guess he's kind of like a celebrity I mean, I just followed him because he's zero from Holes. <laughs> I don't know. I followed The Woody Show. That's my favorite show. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's kind of fun to follow things on Snapchat. I like that they have, like, that kind of, like, discovery page where they have different things that are going on that you can follow as well. Um, and, like, you can watch just, like, Snapchat stories. Like, I know that depending, like, when you're in L.A., you can post to, like, the L.A. story and you can see what other people are doing around, like, the area and things like that. And I think the, I think that that's a lot of fun, especially like if you're like at a music festival or things like that, you can see other people's that you don't necessarily follow. You can just watch their things too. And that's kind of fun to connect. A little additive since we're talking about Snapchat. Yeah. Instagram for iPhone has recently updated and now you can kind of pinch to zoom in and out of pictures. Yes, and you I'm, can zoom. I love it. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, the iOS will have, uh, oh, excuse me, that the Android we'll have the same update pretty soon yeah i like it i did hear that um you can like like you said zoom in on pictures and i didn't know it was on videos also i didn't know about the pictures but i think that's kind of cool because there's like times when like i do want to zoom in <laughs> so it's kind of cool i like it i think it's a fun feature and i think that uh yeah. a lot of people have been wanting it so Instagram's quickly becoming my favorite social media platform. Yeah, it's especially I feel like this summer they've been really upping a lot of their game. I like it. Yeah, they have. I but like it it, a lot. they've also been making a lot more money lately because they've started um, you know, featuring, like they started sponsoring. Oh. You know, people have been paying for that, so now they probably have the the money to hire more programmers and, and to right. make different things. And to do different things with it. Ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. I do think Instagram. Yeah, Instagram is probably my favorite. I still haven't used the story feature on Instagram, though. I've just been posting my stories to Snapchat. But then people post their Snapchat stories on Instagram. <laughs> they do? You can do that. Yeah, like if you save it. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Save your videos and then you can just do do post it on instagram but we're going to take it to a quick break so leave it locked here we you are listening to the golden state media concepts social media news podcast check out the show that's built on the mma from the ufc to extreme cage fighting they got the fights covered check out the gsmc mma podcast get the latest news on past or upcoming fights join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the mma past present and future when it's the fight game there's just one show to check out gsmcpodcast.com backslash mma dash podcast don't forget to like them on facebook and follow them on twitter visit G smcpodcast.com for more info.
and welcome back to the Golden State Media Concept Social Media News Podcast. I'm Pauline. Mariana. And, okay, so what's happening with Mike Carey? Mike Carey, he was uh, an analyst for CBS for the NFL, and he used to be a rep for the NFL. Um, I want to say he was an analyst for just like two years, and he recently was... Um, he won't be into the 2016 NFL season. That's how they phrased it. And the thing is, CBS is blaming the fans for him being let go. Really? What are they saying? Well, they're saying that that uh, the fans are like overly harsh on him, but he does kind of make wrong calls a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So you'll see like these heated posts of, you know, somebody will post something like condescending, like, um, oh, well, you don't have any like fact to support this. You know, in fact, let me help you. Uh, right. Mike Carey is really bad because dot dot dot, and then somebody will answer like, "Okay, fine." Mike Carey is really bad because dot dot dot. He, you know, miscalls plays. He he talks about the wrong thing. There are a lot of times where there will be a game going on, and he's talking about like some heated issue, but that has nothing to do with the game that's currently being played. Right. Um, his voice has been known to like wash out a little bit, like he talks too loud or something, and you know, which I guess it could be the sound guy's fault. But you know, there was just a few things going on, and a lot of people have been jumping on him, and. You know, some of his kind of higher ups were saying that usually or sometimes it can take a while for someone to kind of develop into a good TV broadcaster. Right, which is very true. Right, and normally people are kind of patient enough to let that happen, but in this case, they haven't been as patient as they thought, so they let him go. Aww, that's always sad. It is sad. Um, I just thought it was, you know, people were so torn over this, so I feel I felt like we had to talk about it. Yeah, so um, it does get, I mean, it is pretty difficult. A lot of people, um, and like you said, sometimes they do kind of like just grow with you when you're um, on TV, on radio, whatever. But then sometimes there are people just don't. And because a lot, and like there's sometimes where like they'll let um, somebody who has like an unpopular opinion stay just because of the fact that they have the unpopular opinion a lot of times. Because I know, like, Charles Barkley, sometimes I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Or, like, (laughs) what are you saying? You know, (laughs) he'll say things and it's just like, all right. But then everybody kind of chops it up as, oh, that's just Charles type of a thing. But then again, he is Charles Barkley. So it's, you know, you have a little bit of leeway when, um, depending on your background and things like that. So it is pretty sad that they had to let him go. Hopefully he'll be able to find work someplace else and that, you know, he'll be able to do something different. I mean, I'm sure he will. But also, what is Charles Barkley? Is he an analyst? Because I thought he was just more of like a presenter. Uh, sometimes he, he does like uh, post, pre, game, in game. Uh, you know, he does like a little bit of everything. With- yep. Because he's really funny. Like him and Shaquille O'Neal are really funny. That's what I'm saying. I, I think really a lot of times it's ever... more for like the fun factor and just yeah, hearing I, them. I don't ever hear them talking like during the game, you know? And also, you know, like no offense to um, Mike Carey, but these guys are both NBA legends and like Hall of Famers. No, that's Mike what I'm Carey, saying. So they you know, kind of get like some leeway just because of who they are. So they can right. they can stand to say something that's just off the wall and people are like, what? But all right, cool. It's Charles, you know? that like your platform will will decide how acceptable the things you say are yes so that's with him which is kind of actually pretty sad um hopefully like i said something else will pan out for him and this can be like a learning thing or who knows who knows it's a learning thing i guess for everybody um also in other news which okay so how do you feel about Pokemon Go? Do you feel like it's fizzling out or is it just that everybody's over it right now? And so it's not major in your face uh, news. I don't know because I, I still haven't played it, but I don't think it's fizzling out. I think it's going strong. I think um, it's just not new news anymore. So people aren't really talking about it, but I think people are still playing it. Right. So they are coming up with a buddy system feature to the game. Is that what this is? Uh-huh. So what, what do you know what it entails? I think that's kind of cool. It's like you have to be with somebody else. Well, what it is is um, you can choose Pokemon. I don't know if it's one or like a few that you can like quote unquote kind of team with. And you when you walk around, you walk around with these Pokemon. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I guess. I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a huge Pokemon like go person, but 
I guess it's kind of cool. I could see how people would like that. And so I you think, get paired uh, up with like a Pokemon. So you're kind of like get your own like Pika Pikachu. Yeah, they're like your little posse that walk around with you. Pokemon. Yeah, um, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> like pretty if I was a player in it. Um, and I think that they're expecting this to like as big as it was when it first came out. I think this is going to just launch it right back into that kind of right you know, kind of forefront of like the public eye. I think it will be a lot of fun because I kind of like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Having, because then you're even more so like Ash Ketchum and Pika. Exactly. But you can have like your own like Jiggly. Like I can have my, sure my little Jiggly buff. Update, they're adding new Pokemon because there have been people that have caught them all already. But the thing is, they're not all available. Like it's just all of them that were currently available. Someone had caught all of them. Mm hmm. But, you know, with every update, they're going to put out more and more. Because I think in total, there's, I don't know how many Pokemon. There's so but many Pokemon. I I feel like they may have started out with more of, like, the originals. And now they're just going to add. Because, like, they have all the different versions. Like, Pokemon White, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Green. Like, they have a lot of different versions. Well, that's what I thought. Because there are Pokemon that, the kind of the more, like, staples, I guess. Or you can call them the more, like, uh, the more notable. But there are there are 700 and 61 Pokemon in total. Wow. I, and I want to say right now there's like less than 200 that are available on the game. Mm -hmm. So there's enough room for a lot of updates. Yeah. Which is actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm wondering how long... Well, I guess with the updates, it'll get... Each time they update it or add a new feature, it'll like revamp it again for everyone. Because if... Especially how you were saying, like, if you're a person who's kind of, like, already caught all the ones that are available, you're going to you're gonna be bored. Like, you're going to want more to do. Right. Because you're, if you're, especially if you're that dedicated to it. That's a lot of traveling they must have had to do to <laughs> catch all of those. Yeah, but people have already found ways to hack it. Like, I, I know some people that if you, like, attach your phone to a ceiling fan and then turn it on and your phone's moving in circles, then... The Pokemon Go app takes it as you're walking around, and it'll find Pokemon. Oh my gosh, so that's no fun. You shouldn't hack it. That's what I was... Well, my friend was telling me this, and I was like, you're already a loser for, for being so into the Pokemon game, but now you can't even play the Pokemon game. Yeah, that takes yeah. the fun out of it. That's like, I know people that have like those Fitbits, and, or like those trackers that track how much you've walked oh, that day. Uh-huh. And they'll just like shake their arm or like wave their arm up and down because it basically counts like your arm swings. That's kind of like how it helps count your steps. Right. And so like they'll just wave their arm and I'm like, oh, that's cheating. You're not taking those steps, you know? Yeah. You know, it's funny because it, it's just one of those things where it's like, well, you're only cheating yourself. I mean, no one else cares how many very steps true. you take or how many Pokemon you have. Very, very true. So um, we're actually going to have to cut it. That's going to be the end of our episode. Um, you guys have been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media News Podcast. You can listen to us on our network website, gsmcpodcast.com. Also, we are available to listen to this episode again, future and past episodes um, on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. It's been a lot of fun. I'm Pauline. Mariana. And we will talk to you guys next time. Thank you.